Well, once again, we are talking about the state of Texas. Another high profile evangelist has been arrested, but he is saying in a statement now that has been released that this was just all a misunderstanding and that, well, the arrest, it was just made by false accusations. But what about in the past? Did this Texas evangelist have previous charges? We're going to talk about it in just a second, but before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, guys can do me a big favor by helping out this blind guy here by hitting the like button on this video and sharing it around when you do that. You guys help to get these videos out there more in the algorithm, the recommended sections, gets more eyes on our content, helps make people more aware of what is happening in these churches today. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work, think about making a donation to help out. There's multiple ways you could do that. One by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. You can also become a monthly contributor for just five bucks a month by joining my Patreon, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, that link in the description. And you can also help us out in our GoFundMe, the GoFundMe link in the description of this video as well. The GoFundMe was started to help out myself and my wife with our stacking medical bills and other bills piling up. My wife, who was only 39, suffered a stroke back in August. It was due to an endocarditis vegetation buildup on her heart. A piece of that went off to the brain. On top of that, she was also diagnosed with a clotting disorder that'll leave her on the blood thinners for the rest of her life and had a bunch of allergic reactions to medication as well. It has just been an extremely rough couple of months for us. So however you are able to help contribute to us, we appreciate that. Maybe you just you know love this ministry that I do. You want to help out because of that. We greatly appreciate it and love you all for it. Let's get into this. Yeah, once again, we're talking about Texas. We're going to McKinney, Texas here, Revival City Church. David Scarberry is the evangelistic outreach director for the church. And what he does is he takes groups out on Wednesdays for the church, and they go out, they evangelize, and they preach healing, they preach salvation. Okay, sounds good, right? Well, big problem, because David Scarberry was arrested not long ago on charges for, and this is, this is what it said, for continuously roughing up a family member. Now, according to the Texas Penal Code, this is a, this is a third degree felony. And they say that this continuous roughing up of a family member means that this has been taking place for a period of 12 months or less. Now, what was not clear as part of the arrest warrant is what specific family member was being roughed up, okay? That we don't know. But again, they're listing this as continuous. And if you go back to what David Scarberry said, he said these were false accusations and a misunderstanding. But when you take a look again, you know, a continuous you know issue here of roughing somebody up in your family, that's a big problem. So this isn't just an isolated incident. So is it truly a misunderstanding? Is it just false accusations? Or is there more to this story? Now, David Scarberry has bonded out of jail after the arrest. And again, he is proclaiming his innocence. But what about what took place prior? Does he have any previous charges? Well, as a matter of fact, he does. Now, I want to go back to 1994. Because in 1994, his ex-wife had issued a protective order against Scarberry. So more roughing up was going on. Now, those charges were later dismissed. However, about eight years later in 2002, David Scarberry was sentenced to five years in prison for charges of possessing a piece. If you know what I mean, he apparently had, you know, attempted to use it in a confrontation as well as possessing illegal substances with intent to distribute. So he served five years for that. So this is not somebody that has had a clean record by any means. Already a five-year prison sentence and, you know, again, the ex-wife issuing the protective order and now, in the latest, an arrest for roughing up a family member. So there's something wrong here. 
There's something majorly wrong. And I'll say this, as of October 7th, there has not been any statement released from Revival City Church. And I think that's a big problem because whether they're trying to, you know, ignore it, sweep it under the rug, I don't know, but that's a big problem. I mean, let's be honest here. What, what have we seen throughout this entire year? I've been covering these stories left and right. I almost can't keep up with them, to be honest. Texas, the spotlight on these pastors being arrested or fired or whatever the case, God is just completely lifting the veil on all of this. And if there was a family member here of Scarberries that was in danger, look, it needed to be reported. But he's claiming his innocence. We'll see. We will see where this, you know, where this all goes. You know, I don't know if the church knew of his history. And I question whether or not, and you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section, should Scarberry had, you know, should he even have been put in a position of leadership to begin with in this church? Again, knowing his history, there are consequences. And look, we say this all the time. People say, oh, we all sin, fall short. True, true. And they preach restoration left and right. But does that mean that the individual, you know, who served jail time or whatever the case, does that mean that they should be put back into a position of spiritual authority again? I don't think so. That's my opinion, though. Maybe you have a different one. I know there's a lot of people out there that worship pastors. And they think that, well, it doesn't matter what they do. They could serve 30 years in prison for the most horrendous things. But no, by all means, let them take over a church or let them serve in some sort of a ministry capacity. I just don't agree with it. But you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Maybe you're someone that attends Revival City Church and you would like to offer up some more insight into this. Please feel free to do so. Again, my Texas people out there, you guys can let me know what you think. There's a lot of you that watch me from there and you... Uh, you know, really watch this this channel, this platform here, because you want to know what's going on in your state. Don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work, you would like to contribute with a donation. Remember, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video, become a monthly contributor on the Patreon for just five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news, or you can help us out also on our GoFundMe. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves who occupy its pulpits, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world, as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then... You invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.